Say tricks. So you like ad clear, huh? When someone asks, who's running? You proudly exclaim, not it. When someone gives you a hard time about not learning the mechanics, you think to yourself, I'm gonna clear the crack out of these ads. Then buckle up, buttercup, cause this one's for you. Our super needle storm is used for boss damage and as a panic switch. Which riff you choose is personal preference. The type of rift does not matter for our needs. Our melee arcane needle has three charges and unravels targets on hit. For our grenade, we are using shackle grenade paired with our first aspect, Mindspun Invocation. Mindspun Invocation allows us to consume our shackle grenade to grant us Weaver's Trance for 25 seconds. While in Weaver's Trance, any final blow will trigger a suspending explosion. Our enemies do need to be somewhat tightly grouped to make the most use of this, but we will make up for it with Weaver's Call. With Weaver's Call, casting our rift spawns three threadlings. These threadlings will cover more distance than our suspending explosions, allowing us to spread our wave of destruction much more easily. Thread of Evolution will allow our threadlings to travel further and causes them to deal 50% more damage to rank and file enemies. And 33% more damage to many bosses and bosses. Threat of Generation will give us grenade energy when we deal any damage. Our grenade ability is our most important, so we want to make sure our uptime is as high as possible. We will take a hit to our discipline, but this fragment is more than worth it. Threat of Warding will give us Woven Mail for 10 seconds every time we pick up an Orb of Power. Woven Mail gives us an additional 45% damage resistance on top of our resilience stat. With tier 10 resilience, that comes out to 61.5% damage resistance. Lastly, Threat of Mind will grant us class ability energy when we defeat suspended targets. We will get anywhere from 10 to 30% depending on the tier of enemy defeated. For our exotic armor, we will be using the Swarmers. The Swarmers will cause our Tangles to spawn two Threadlings when destroyed. This perk also causes our Threadlings to unravel any enemy that they deal damage to. When an enemy becomes unraveled, they release three Seeking Threads towards themselves or adjacent enemies, which deal 29 damage per thread and further spread the unraveled debuff on hit. Friendly reminder, our powered melees also unravel our foes. My exotic weapon of choice was the Navigator. Its exotic perk, Protective Weave, makes getting woven mail an even easier task when playing in a fire team. When you shoot an ally with 8 rounds, you and your ally will be granted woven mail. You will also be refunded 5 rounds. Weft Cutter, our other exotic perk, will cause a target to become severed after receiving sustained damage from the Navigator. This means they will deal 40% less damage to us and our allies for 10 seconds. While the Navigator is my top choice, since our suspending explosions can be triggered with any weapon, we have total freedom on our exotic weapons. So, two of my other top picks for the build are Malfeasance and Quicksilver Storm. With Malfeasance, Explosive Shadow will embed an Explosive Slug into our target for 6 seconds. Embedding 5 slugs will cause them to explode and deal 273 damage and can stun unstoppable champions. Malfeasance also deals 25% extra damage to Taken Combatants and Gambit Invaders. And it has a special interaction with Wither Horde. If an enemy is directly struck by Wither Horde's Blight, then Malfeasance will deal 25% more damage to that enemy as well. If you have the Catalyst, then it will also have Vorpal Weapon for an additional 20% damage boost against mini bosses, bosses, and vehicles. With Quicksilver Storm, landing 10 hits on an enemy will load up a tracking rocket for the next bullet. These rockets aggressively track your target, dealing 5 impact damage and up to 130 explosive damage. Tracking rocket hits will load up a grenade charge for the weapon's grenade launcher mode. You can have up to 3 charges. When ready, long press reload to switch to grenade launcher mode. 
grenades deal 24 impact damage and up to 1716 explosive damage in a 4 meter radius. You will definitely want the catalyst completed for this one. Doing so converts its damage type to strand but also causes enemies killed by the weapon's grenades to spawn a tangle which is a beautiful synergy for the devastating ad clear that this build generates. For legendary weapons, I like to run this build with Volt Shot weapons. When I am using the Navigator, I usually ran the Icolus SMG with Volt Shot and Feeding Frenzy. When using Malfeasance or Quicksilver Storm, I like to run Path of Least Resistance with Volt Shot and Adaptive Munitions. For my heavy weapon, I ran my new Hullabaloo with Volt Shot and Chain Reaction. This heavy weapon puts in work y'all. I was able to finish the Edge Transit Attunement quest in only a handful of waves with this bad boy. For our armor stats, we will prioritize Discipline and then Resilience. My previous version of this build then focused on Intellect and then Strength. But this time around, we are going to focus on Recovery followed by Intellect. You may have noticed that the old version had 100 resilience while the new version only has 90. This is because I sacrificed the stat mod slot on the arms to make room for some extra orb generation. And since we will have woven mail almost constantly, I figured I wouldn't miss that 3% of damage reduction too much. On our helmet, we want to have one harmonic and one arc siphon so that all of our weapons will give us orbs of power. In version 1 of this build, we used a special ammo finder to help keep our navigator topped up. In version 2, we are dropping that and replacing it with ashes to assets. We don't use our grenades directly to kill enemies, but the suspended explosions from our weaver's trance actually count as grenade kills and will interact with all of our grenade mods. The ridiculous ad clear combined with this information will take this build to an entirely new level. On our gauntlets, we are running one impact induction for 12% grenade energy when we deal damage with our powered melee. However, keep in mind that there is a 7 second cooldown between activations for this mod, so you will want to be strategic with how you use each of your 3 melee charges. Then we have one heavy handed so our powered melee kills will print an orb. Then we are getting rid of the grenade kickstart from version 1 in favor of firepower. Since our suspended explosions count as grenades, they will also generate an orb whenever they kill an enemy. On our chest we are running two harmonic reserves and one arc reserve to boost up our navigator and heavy weapon. These are entirely flexible and contingent on your choice of weaponry. On our legs, we have recuperation for 70 HP on orb pickups. Then one absolution so that all of our abilities get a 5% bump when we grab an orb. And one orbs of restoration so that our lowest ability will get an additional 10% bump. On our class item, we have one powerful attraction to make grabbing orbs easy peasy. Then one outreach to give us a 12% bump in melee energy when we cast our rift. Then one reaper so that after casting our rift, our next weapon kill will spawn an orb. When entering combat, you want to begin by consuming your shackle grenade for weaver's trance. And, if able, apply woven mail to an ally with your navigator so that you can also get woven mail. Then, kill the weakest enemy to deal explosive damage and suspend nearby enemies. You will likely also spawn a tangle and unravel all enemies with your unraveling rounds. Then, let unravel seeking threads do all the work for you, causing a domino effect of suspending explosions. More often than not, the seeking threads will detonate any tangles that spawn, causing even more explosive damage, and will spawn two more threadlings to mop up anything that remains. Then, scoop up all the orbs you have created by running around or casting your rift to heal and top up your abilities. Now, rinse and repeat until nothing is left standing. For boss phases, start by casting your super, then switch to your heavy weapon and empty it into the boss. Then switch to your navigator and maintain sustained damage as doing so will sever the boss causing it to deal 40% less damage to you and your team. 
This is an updated version of the first build I ever made on the channel. I was waiting to reach the one year mark before revisiting it, but Onslaught just happened to be the perfect activity to bring it back. So I hope you enjoyed this throwback as much as I have. Thanks for watching. Have a good one, y'all.